Srinivas. Uh, I'm a second year PhD student at uh, UC Berkeley, uh, advised by uh, Professor Peter Abiel. And I, uh, my research topics are in uh, deep learning and reinforcement learning and their intersections. Uh, so the, the fun part about being a PhD student is you don't really have a uh, regular schedule for uh, what a typical day looks like. It's based on how you decide uh, on that day what you feel like doing and uh, you, uh, including when you wake up and stuff. So uh, I don't really have a uh, fixed schedule but most of the time I spend on uh, thinking about what to work on uh, and, uh, and when I already have a project going on I just tend to focus on uh, implementing it or uh, talking with collaborators, things like that. So my definition is uh, more or less inspired from uh, Alan Turing, which is uh, as long as you can pass the Turing test, create a program that can pass the Turing test, uh, you, uh, you can, uh, that's basically what artificial intelligence is. I have a more broad viewpoint that uh, we should be working on artificial general intelligence, uh, which is the fact that the program should be, uh, uh, the intelligence that, you, uh, that the program exhibits should be broadly general, just like how a human is. Uh, so we are all trying to create a program that uh, can uh, approximate how a human brain works. Uh, that's human level AI, and uh, hopefully we can go beyond that at some point, yeah. So deep, deep learning is basically a field of machine learning that's inspired by, but not the same as how the human brain works. Uh, so the human brain has a bunch of neurons and neurons are connected uh, to each other via axons. And so the whole thing uh, works basically uh, inspiring from that, but uh, a more concrete mathematical approximation. Uh, and so you have some raw input signals that are provided uh, to this machine learning program. and at each layer, a bunch of neurons are firing based on certain patterns, and this is compounded multiple times and end up approximating an output that, uh, so it's almost, work. it works like uh, pretty fast, seamlessly, almost like how a human brain works, especially in tasks where you don't have to think too much. Uh, for, insta for instance, identifying an object, identifying your face, identifying a cat, these are things that we just do without a lot of thought, so uh, it's a parallel computer that uh, is doing the same thing. There are a lot of things to uh, admire about the way he works. Uh, best piece of advice is uh, try not think about what to do once you've decided uh, your agenda for the day. Just get things done. Uh, Peter stresses a lot on productivity, so that's the that's, that's a, that's a thing I take from him the most. Uh, sure. So I was working uh, at OpenAI in the games team, uh, so working on fundamental uh, improvements to the uh, policy gradient algorithms. And spe specifically, uh, OpenAI developed this algorithm called Proximal Policy Optimization. And I was researching on ways to uh, help improve the algorithm in cases where uh, uh, the, the optimization might be unstable. Uh, uh, personally, I'm working on uh, using neural networks to process raw observations that a robot would potentially uh, face when it's deployed in the real world. So, uh, and, it, and it has to work without any engineered reward functions or labels. So uh, that's a really hard problem. So hopefully if people can figure that out and we'll all have uh, domestic robots work, uh, helping people, helping old people in households for basic tasks. That, uh, that may be hard for people with disabilities and so on. I'm personally excited about the uh, uh, gaming and virtual reality or AR. So I think there's a lot going on there. A lot more people are excited by uh, using uh, things like generative adversarial networks or uh, deep reinforcement learning for gameplay. Uh, so for instance, you could automate playtesting. So for, let's say a gaming company develops a game uh, and they, they want humans to come and play it just to see if the game works fine. Or are there any loopholes that people can figure out to play the game easier? 
So these things could be automated by running a deep RL agent just to optimize the game score. It's commonly uh, termed as reward farming in RL, where the uh, agent figures out some hacks uh, which, are, which the game developer might not have intended. Summit, uh, like I, I listened to a really great talk by uh, Jeff Clone on Go Explore. I also happened to get a little bit of Ian Goodfellow's uh, security and machine learning talk. So uh, those are the things I really like. I also got a chance to uh, catch up with some people. Uh, basically, I'm currently working on uh, trying to learn representations that can capture uh, discrete objects in a scene. Uh, for instance, as we are seeing each other right now, you can understand that uh, I'm a human here and there, there are these couches here and so on. So uh, that's really hard for a robot to do uh, or, or an AI agent to do without any labels, especially when there's a lot of clutter in the scene. So that's, uh, working, I'm working on fundamental ways to address this problem.